Hi everyone! So I know it's been a while since we went MIA, but uh, to be honest, we really wanted to stick to our regular format where we kind of focus on meeting the guest in person. Um, and we were really hoping that by mid-March, we would be able to get back on track and have the regular episodes being shot. Um, unfortunately, as most of us know now, we might be in lockdown for another month and we thought instead of just completely disappearing from the scene, we would revert to our special Zoom sessions and here we are. And for this Zoom session, I have with me Sonam Yangjin Tamang, who is a lecturer and yeah. Uh, if she has clients referred to her, then she is also a therapist. And I thought, like, thank you so much, Sonam, firstly, for being here. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, I know, like, we can talk a lot, like, when the two of us uh, talk, we talk for hours on end about self-care and self-growth. And then um, I thought it would be really relevant, given the time, you know, how relevant these topics are to be able to well, attempt at least to bring this on camera and thank you once again Sonam for agreeing you know to bring this topic we usually talk for ourselves on camera we really appreciate it so uh, are you ready for your 11 questions have you had the chance to go through what other 11 questions we asked other guests um I did I did uh, I've seen them because they're quite popular and I was thinking you know among these popular people what am I doing here no <laughs> I think, uh, you know, 11.11 has always been about um, kind of bringing people with stories on board. I think that's what we have always uh, wanted to do. And then, like I was saying in my introduction as well, when the two of us talk, it's always about topics that I personally feel is relevant. And you being from your field, you always have something really substantial to contribute to the conversation, you know, which is why I was like really looking forward to having this conversation with you. So here's the first question, okay, Sonam. Um, now, I think uh, one of my major when I did my undergrad is psychology. And when I came back and initially, like I had to, whenever people asked me, uh, I had to kind of say like, oh yeah, one of my major is psychology. And then the response I would get from people is like, oh, so you can read mind. And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> you know like I'm like no I cannot you still have to tell me like I cannot read mine so has there been ever been like any such incidences like in your profession like especially as a therapist um a lot of uh, first year students ask me that like, can you read mind and I'm like no I cannot read your mind but if given uh, if we spend a lot of time with the skill that I have learned uh, through my education and through my uh, experience, uh, we cannot really read mind, but somehow we can analyze uh, uh, behavior, situation, and then to some extent we can tell, you know, what kind of personality uh, an individual has. For the fact that you were a science student, I also had the assumption that you would um, be a doctor or an engineer or something like that, right? Why, like, this current profession? Why the deviation? I did not have any kind of ambition uh, to be a doctor or to be an engineer or architect when I was in class 12. I did not, uh, you know, I did not have that in mind that I want to be a, a therapist. You know, it was just accident. And sometimes, you know, there are certain things that we are we can control and certain things we cannot. So I think when you go with the flow, uh, the right things just come to us. Yeah. Uh -huh, okay, very nice way of putting it because I think it's always a debate between either go with the flow or only dead fish go with the flow. You know, I'm always stuck in that dilemma. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Another question would be now, you said that uh, it was an accidental discovery of this profession for you right it really? yes <laughs> <laughs> it just happens for you like and then like you mentioned again like you know um during our time or even now I think when you are a science student to be a doctor to be an architect or to be an engineer is still aspirational right but I think no harm you know, no harm in yeah 
Yeah, but Thank your you. parents were supportive and you took this path. Do you really believe that uh, anybody can become anything? Uh, I believe partially yes and partly no, because there are certain things that we are in control and certain things we are not in control. And uh, when I, uh, during my therapy also, I tell, uh, especially therapy with the uh, youth, you know, and uh, they are familiar with Wiz Khalifa. And, and he, I think it is he who sang the song, living young and wild and free. free. Yeah. Yes, of yeah. course, you are young. Anybody, since uh, I, I think this uh, channel is targeting the youth, right? I think um, they can relate to it. Yes, you are uh, young, wild, definitely, and free. But also, you know, you have to be responsible of all the action that comes with the freedom, right? You are responsible for all the consequences, you're, you're responsible for the consequences of the choice that you willingly chose. You can be anything, but then you have to be responsible and accountable for the consequences of the choices that you make. Yeah? Yes, right. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure, like, especially like in your profession, like and in therapy and counseling sessions, you do deal with a lot of people and then their stories, you know? Um, and then even as a friend, like when you do listen to someone with like some stories, like you tend to be affected, right? Uh, how do you keep yourself not being affected? Do I take care of myself yeah, with yeah. all the stories that uh, yeah. come to me? No, I was not born a therapist. This is a quiet skill through my own training. I got trained in counseling and again now with uh, I'm in this profession for almost uh, five years, not including my study period, right? And it uh, comes through experience as well. And how I take care of myself is first of all, first of all, which we were taught during our coursework also to get supervision. You know, we always have supervisors. So whether you are a seasoned counselor or a therapist, so uh, what I'm taught is always to have a supervisor. Even though you are like seasoned uh, therapist or a counselor, whether you reach your uh, 60s or 70s and still you're practicing it, we always need to have a supervisor, you know, someone that we can talk to, you know, because there is something called uh, secondary trauma also. It might not, you, I personally might not have experienced it, but I listen to different uh, experiences, you know, and then I might feel that, oh, I might get symptoms also you know, such as maybe nightmares, and then I might, uh, you know, uh, have similar symptoms of what the patient might be having that is called secondary trauma. So in, in Bhutan, it's really uh, difficult sometimes to have uh, supervision. So what we do is we have uh, peer su uh, supervision or peer consultation. You talk to a psychiatrist, you talk to your own counselor, uh, colleagues, or sometimes you just, uh, uh, you know, discuss it among our own professional body. Yeah. But the story do does not go outside. It's all confidential. And one of the biggest fear I personally feel being in a small community is that if I go to a therapist or a counselor and if I share my experiences or get treatment for that matter at the extreme level, then my story would be out there for everybody to listen to of people okay, not okay, okay. going to see a counselor or a therapist of the fear that their story, the counselor or the therapist would share the story. And because of it being a small community, like I would be stigmatized or something like that. Yeah. So uh, the straight answer would be no. Therapy is all confidential. Mm. This is uh, like... Each profession has their own rules and regulations. So our uh, cardinal rule, major rule is that, you know, we don't uh, uh, say uh, the, or maybe do, we don't let out the information of a client to anybody except our supervisor or except in a working, uh, uh, with our working professionals, you know, even though like uh, we work in the same uh, department, Okay, and if a client is referred by uh, someone, 
right? Then the talk is just between this person and me. We don't involve others. So forget about taking the story to uh, uh, outside world, uh, you know, in, in our communities. And when they come to uh, therapy also, if those uh, counselors or therapists have not undergone their own therapy or if, or who have never experienced what it means to be a patient or a client, then you might expect you know, for them, uh, for the patient or the client to just tell the story just like that. You know? But it's not easy. It is not easy to tell everything to a stranger. It is so difficult. I know it is difficult because I have been in that ther- in the patient shoe, you know. And when you have this kind of connection, then there is empathy and not sympathy. A disclaimer that okay, um, that uh, whatever I'm saying, I'm not talking on behalf of all the counselors or therapists in Bhutan. Not like that. Okay, this is just my personal experience, my personal journey. I think I really liked, you know, how you put it together, because my understanding here is if everyone who is going through something and who would like to seek help, but I think is um, kind of worried that the story would be out there, like, um, yeah, that and then, yeah, the first rule is the cardinal rule of the profession that d- does not allow them to actually share the client or the patient's story, even at a dinner table especially at the dinner table, because I think that's the biggest fear in Bhutan that they would just share it. And then, yeah. And even in the professional body itself, they don't share it unless, of course, you are referred to someone or you have been referred from someone. In that aspect, I think because uh, it is a collaborative effort between the council, the two counselors that's involved in your case, only the those involved know it and not everybody. Yeah, I think, yes. yeah. So your stories are safe. Another thing is like, there is this misconception that therapists are just friends who is just going to listen to your story and give advice. If you could touch on that. Yeah, um, I think the common um, comment or the judgment that uh, practicing therapists or the counselor get is like, oh, you are a counselor, you are a therapist. Why don't you counsel your own brother or sister or mother or father who has maybe different kind of uh, problems? Either you can be friends or just have a therapeutic a therapist and a client relationship. We can't have both. Why Sila Bachin? There will always be a judgment. I might uh, help her in different ways, but not really therapy. If she needs therapy, I will definitely recommend her to go and see another therapist, you know, because there's some kind of judgment. It, it comes automatically. But when, uh, when I don't share any uh, kind of relationship other than therapeutic relationship, then the... Uh, no, any, there's no judgment because this is a skill that we have to practice. Mm. Okay, we have to really accept the person genuinely, whether he's a, a murderer or a thief or whatever it might be. And when this individual, this patient gets this kind of acceptance, you know, and no judgmental kind of uh, acceptance, no judgments. And that's when this individual starts changing. And it's the same with friends, I think. Like uh, when people say like, oh, therapists are just friends who give advice, but that's not true because my friends or the client's friends know the client as a friend and they will not be able to give you advice or will not be able to help you without first going into what they think you are which you, know, yeah. you may not even be in the first place, right? Whereas yeah. Yeah. if you go and seek help, then your therapist will get to know the real you and the real um, problem. And then will be able to give you unbiased solutions or help you find unbiased solutions, I believe, right? Yeah. So which is why like yes. therapy is not just friends giving you advice. I think that's the no. bottom line. And the, and, yes, and, and uh, the reason we don't give uh, advice, advice, and we don't ask them what to do is because we don't want a patient or the client to have uh, uh, or maybe develop depend- dependency on 
a therapist, you know, because our main goal of therapy is to make this uh, individual um, independent. Mm. You know, we make things aware, we bring certain things to limelight, and then it is up to this person to choose. I think. Uh... In line with, you know, you talking about not making the client or the patient dependent on the therapist, like there is again another misconception, right, among the clients or the patients that it's like, I go to a therapist and I'm supposed to be like having a quick fix. Yeah, <laughs> but then yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's that's not really the case, right? I'm assuming like it's like. It, it's like a process because what I'm understanding with my limited knowledge on counseling sessions and therapy, like from my undergrads and from, of course, talking to friends like you, is that you are basically trying to form a whole new concept or unlearn certain behaviors, right? So it's it's a process. <laughs> yes, it's a process. Yeah. yeah so this is, yeah. Were you making notes? <laughs> Oh, no. why yesterday? You're a good listener. You're a good listener. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I mean, like, you know, um, like I said, like, I enjoy talking, talking on certain topics and you are a good conversationalist. So it kind of. <laughs> 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 yeah. So tell us about it. Like, you know, that it's not a quick fix. Definitely. There is no quick fix. Okay. Like maybe. Uh example okay you are 34 years old and maybe uh, you have been just diagnosed recently or maybe um, you don't have to get diagnosed you you are having problems or trouble at this age okay and then you come to us and to our doctor or to our therapist or to our counselor and then you expect us to uh, make things better just with one hour of therapy. It does not happen. You have been carrying all the problems, burden, or experiences for a very long time, maybe from childhood till 34 years old. Example, just example, okay? And then you expect us to fix this 34 years of uh, uh, problem in one session. It does not happen like that. And it's a process. You know, always it's a process. And certain things that we might tell uh, during therapy, it might help you during that time, you know. Or so maybe example, um, uh, breathing, breathing exercises. So sometimes it might uh, help you during that time, but it may not help you uh, in the later part of your life. So you need to keep changing. You need to keep uh, adapting to different techniques. So it's a journey and it's a process. Always it's a process, it takes time to process. And, and again, uh, before this, I would like to tell that not all therapist is for all the patient or client, okay? Just like uh, medication, you know? We therapists also, you know? All therapists can't fix everybody or can't, you know, work with everybody. Few people because of personality type, because of attachment style, because of, so many characteristics, you know, we don't match. And does it mean that I am bad or uh, someone, uh, uh, a counselor is incompetent? Not like that. Okay. If certain things are not working, and this is a thing that I personally tell my patient or client as well, that if this therapy at any point in time or in beginning, middle, ending, where, wherever it might be, if you think that this therapy is not working, that I will always refer you to someone else. Or if you know there is someone else, then she or he can go to someone else. Because at the end, we want him or her to get better. Like my own personal uh, journey of uh, you know, going to my personal therapy also is that there were therapists I did not really uh, sync with. Does it mean that he is bad? No. He was like brilliant for my friends, but we didn't match. Then I would switch to a different uh, therapist. So we don't take things personally also, you know, uh, because we understand that just like medication, you know, few people have reactions just like that, you know, a uh, few people might not work with us and that's absolutely okay. And you don't stop your therapy there. 
Okay, you continue with others, and that is fine. Yeah, I think uh, I liked how you answered how、uh, trying to reshift those patterns, and it does not happen like in one session. So、yeah. just carry on. Just, just because like, you don't see immediate effect does not mean that therapy is not working. It is working, yeah. but yeah, it is a gradual process.、Uh, we talked a lot on that. Now,、um, like, do you believe in self help books? Yes, I believe in、uh, self help books, and also, you know, to、uh, get help. You know, if you're having、uh, any kind of problem and all, what I'm trying to say is anything that helps you, just go for it. You people get help. By yoga,、uh, exercising, physical workout, reading, spirituality, energy, any any belief or anything that works for you, definitely you can、uh, go for it. You know, it's not that you get healing only through therapy, not like that.、Mm. Okay, so yes, you can try.、Uh... Helping yourself first when you are not really in that feeling state, and when you go through certain phases, and self help, self help books can be one of the forms. But if you think that you do need help, don't be afraid to seek help. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And also sometimes, no,、um, you need to be very careful, mindful of.、Uh, People who claim to be、um, the professionals in social media, in Instagram, in、uh, Facebook, in wherever it might be, you know,、uh, sometimes there is a danger, you know. Sometimes, especially if you, nowadays, you know, depression, anxiety is the word that is used or misused or used a lot. I think it's awareness is good, but sometimes, you know. Okay, just because you're sad, you're not depressed. Just because you are fearing about your future, you're not.、Uh, you don't have disorder, anxiety disorder, not like that. You know, you need to be、uh, really mindful of whom you are following. And if one of your social media influencer is talking about、um, maybe、uh, depression or anxiety or whatever it might be, does not mean that you really have.、Uh, you know.、Uh, Depression or, or any kind of mental disorders, you know. So in that time, you need to seek.、Uh, you need to have a,、uh, you know, like a good、uh, confirmation from a professional. You know, you need to be careful whom you follow in social media as well, because they might give you wrong message because their idea is different. You know, to be social media influencer, to get many views, to get、uh, to make money out of it, to Keep the audience engaged, so they might post something that you, you might relate to it, okay? But uh, you know, uh, you don't get all the answers from there. Sometimes you might get wrong answer, also wrong direction, also. So that during that time, you need to、uh, get、uh, professional help. As you know, a human being in the first place, you know, to feel anxious. Sad and stressed, and especially I feel like with this lockdown, with not much to do around and not many places to go around, and when you are confined to a space, like you become more susceptible and vulnerable to these things. So,、mm-hmm. when would you recommend, like people like me who might also be going through the same thing, right, to actually seek help, like? How how do you balance? How do you know when you should seek help? You know, nowadays I think、uh, people understand. Not nowadays, people understand what stress is, right? Stress is normal, and especially during COVID times, lockdown time. Now,、uh, thinking about your future, maybe your sleep、uh, pattern has flipped. Maybe you are sleeping late at night, wake up、uh, late in the afternoon. These things are normal. If it is hampering your daily routine, if you're not able to eat because of this for weeks and weeks, for months, if you're not, if you're、uh, getting irritated all the time, you know, then that's when you should seek help. And also, you know, if、uh, you or your friends, if they are feeling suicidal, if they think that if they have thought of killing themselves and that. Killing themselves, then 
you should understand or you know that there is always a help. Directly call 112 and uh, get an ambulance and get get yourself admitted and they will be and they will refer you to a psychiatrist or to a therapist or a counselor and and also having the thought of um, suicide is uh, not wrong you know uh, it means that you are in a lot of pain okay we really hear you and we acknowledge you that uh, you know you are in a lot of pain that is why you're having this thought of killing yourself it's okay but get help, okay? Help yourself. Don't abandon yourself, okay? Help yourself. Call 112 and uh, yeah, you know, get professionals' help, yeah. Uh, I really like how you mentioned, you know, the two aspects before. One is like through the hospital and one is like going to a counselor through word of mouth. So now if let's say like I have uh, self-diagnosed myself huh, by watching so many videos on uh, YouTube or like watching some influencers talk about it and I have self-diagnosed myself like do I go to a hospital by calling 112 or can I directly uh, go to a therapist? MOH is floating uh, numbers, you know, that you can directly contact and the numbers uh, are 17123238-3940 and 41. So you can call uh, these numbers and uh, get uh, counseling, right? And uh, again, don't call to ask for refill, uh, refilling the medication to get appointment and no, no, not like that. Uh, this, th these are the numbers to get uh, counseling. And these are the numbers uh, that MOH has given and is advertising for uh, mental health. One way is this and the other way is, you know, you can, 112 is for emergency, okay? If you're feeling suicidal, Okay, and if you think uh, your parents or your friends or if you're not able to talk to anyone, if there is someone who can help you, very good. Okay, if you think that there's no one to help you, if you, if you think that no one is listening to you, then emergency call 112, then they will refer you, refer you to a professional. Other way is directly go to psychiatric ward. There is a myth that whoever goes to a psychiatric ward they are chelom or they are psycho, not like that. Okay, you know, just like you go, you go to Siliguri, you go to Bangkok, you go to Delhi, US, and then you give like certain number of money, and then you do the physical examination, right? Just like that. Simply, you do the physical examination to check whether there is some kind of uh, physical illness or not. You know, that is for physical you know, examination, your body, but there are certain things which you cannot see, you cannot touch, you know, but you can feel it, you can feel the pain inside, it's terrible, you know, and these are the doctors who help you with that, the pain which is not seen, okay, which cannot be seen in x-ray and all, the pain, you know, which is invisible, but which is eating you up, psychiatrist, therapist, counsellors, are the ones who can help you get better. Before we become a therapist, a counselor, we go for our own therapy, right? Uh, the counseling or therapy serves uh, three purposes. First of all, it is uh, remedial. Second is preventive. Uh, third is developmental, meaning that remedial, especially, you know, like those who already ha have symptoms or who, are, who have problems, who have diagnosis, or, uh, or the disorders uh, uh, who are diagnosed with disorders, right? So already they have a problem, then they come to us, to doctors to get help, remedial, right? We help them with their problem, with their disorders. And preventive is before you be, get sick or before a problem starts, if you think that, okay, you need help, then you go for it before you get into depression and all, then you go for help to clear things out, preventive, 
you know you don't have to take medication for that just like preventive level developmental is like okay you want to grow more you know you want to um you really want to be aware of certain conscious and unconscious part of you so you don't have to be sick to get uh, therapy you know you can go uh, uh, for developmental purpose as well or preventive uh, purpose yes i think it's like a really nice perspective to counseling you know like that's uh, self growth that uh, you don't have to be sick even if you want to be aware and to be able to grow from that awareness then you also go and seek a counselor or see a therapist right i think that that's a really like this silver lining to this whole profession uh, that people think is all about you know oh it, if you go to see a counselor or a therapist, you're crazy, right? Yeah. But this, there's the silver lining there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty sure like being a lecturer and then also practicing therapist, like you might have to feel good about yourself and always in this positive feeling. That's at least my assumption oh. huh? of how like oh. all the therapists are because you're aware most of the time yeah. you are always in that um, good feeling state. So, how do you maintain your good feeling state? Uh, all it doesn't mean that all doctors who are like who are doctors don't get sick. They get sick, right? Even they have cough and cold. They have different kind of uh, uh, diseases, and they get treatment for that, right? So we also we are not God, you know. We are not all sorted out. Uh, personal supervision, personal therapy, peer consultation helps. And also, you know, uh, my personal, okay, I don't know about others. My personal is reading, uh, connecting with higher power, and exercising, eating on time, hydrating yourself, sleeping a lot, detoxing from internet, social media. This helps. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think detoxing is something and sleeping a lot is something that everybody could try <laughs> yes okay, i think um, that that's the thing that you can try okay so one book that uh, one help self help book or one book that you would recommend <laughs> to every reader that you have read and you think would benefit okay. others my favorite book and that book has shaped me my uh, shaped me personally professionally and how i practice my therapy also is uh, on becoming a person and it says a therapist view of therapy but also it's a self help book and uh, the overall idea that it gives is you know look at someone beyond diagnosis beyond labeling someone and you know they're always on becoming till you die my personal uh, takeaway message from that book is that i can make mistake it's okay don't repeat it if it happens again it's okay there is always there is always a uh, time or a space where you can correct it you can always go if something bad happens to you it happened you cannot undo it but what can you do you know you do certain things which you are in control and things that you are not in control just uh, surrender to the universe to god to to anything <laughs> <laughs> okay on becoming carl rogers yeah okay uh, last message do you have any love yourself accept yourself realistically <laughs> I don't know whether that depends or not, but I liked the yourself, realistic part. <laughs> really? love, yeah. love yourself, accept yourself, but realistically, because I think it's true. Like a lot of the time, it's always on the extreme ends, right? Either either you are feeling like um, worthless, or else either you are becoming so self-absorbed that you don't realize that you are becoming the toxic person. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like like oh be self-obsessed but realistically 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Sonam. Like, I really, really appreciate you um, talking about, um, you know, self-care, self-help, and I think especially helping me and uh, people who would want to be part of this conversation understand. I think especially in times like this, Uh, when you're confined in your own space with your own mind, I think um, you are more prone to and more prone and vulnerable to things that normally may not trigger you. And like we were having this chat, um, try to help yourself, take care of yourself. And if you think that uh, you need help, don't be ashamed or scared to seek help. Like she mentions, like um, there is this whole team dedicated both to mental health response as well as physical health response. Thank you everybody for watching and until next time, take care. Ta-da. I would like to say this, like, subscribe and share. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's an afterthought from Sonam, but yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>